This is what she does to me, Kyle. She hits me with that. I've been in the TV business since 2010. Good Lord, I was on my third reverse mortgage in 2010. Do you know how? I'm not saying I've been in a long, long, long time, but I've been in it a minute. Look at that. Kyle, he's sick he, of you. He's he, finished. Kyle you. passed out. He laughs the hardest. Oh my God. Wait, we've killed him. Welcome to the Next Level Journalist, where you will hear from some of the best journalists in the business or who have been there, done that, and willing to share with you what they've learned so you can get better, faster. My guests today are the hosts of the Lee and Haley Show. It's a Central Kentucky-based show, but they are spreading around the country. Lee Cruz, Haley Harmon, thank you two so much for doing this. Oh my gosh, we're so excited. It's so good to see you, Kyle. We're so happy to be here. And what is your name again? Oh, it's Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> naturally That's naturally oh i love you lee it's so good to see you guys you, buddy. and it feels good that you guys are you know you guys are on a show that's not your show so i feel pretty honored to be doing this oh gosh well we're happy to do it we'll take any pub we can get you know yeah <laughs> so. there there is a check for this though right kyle you right. said we're gonna get paid to do it <laughs> it's in the mail right that's all right it's in the mail all right <laughs> All right, you two, let's, uh, since we have both of you on here, I know you both are going to be awesome because you guys have nothing but fun if people can't tell already. But let's talk about each one of you guys' journey and feel free to talk with one another, me, you know, whatever you want to do. But take us back to your journey when you all decided that, you know what, I want to get into TV and bring us full circle. Do you want to? Well, first there was dirt. Okay. <laughs> for you. That's how it all began. Mm -hmm. Uh,. <laughs> You want to go first? Ladies first. You go first. Oh, okay. Um, I like, I think I kind of always knew I wanted to do something in front of the camera, um, but I was obsessed with news when I was a little kid. Like, I was obsessed. Like, I was up watching the news with my mom when I was in, like, second grade every day. Like, my siblings only watched the news when it was a snow day. I was down there every day. Like, what's going on? That girl looks so pretty. That looks so fun. Like, I just want to do that. And then, um, yeah, when I got into high school and was thinking about college, I thought I definitely, I really think this is something that I could do because I've got a big personality and I just thought this could be something I could do and enjoy and have fun with. So went to college for it and was super blessed to get a job out of college and the rest is history. So I, my first job was in Bowling Green on WBKO. Um, and then I moved to Knoxville and worked at the ABC station there, WATE. And then I came to Lexington to work over at LEX 18 in 2014. Um, worked there till 2019. And then now started this new show, the Lee and Haley show that we own ourselves. And it's just a totally different concept. And it's been a really great learning experience and really fun. Mine wasn't so for the dirt. Yeah, I had a, a different kind of journey, Kyle. There was prison. There were gangs. <laughs> there were a lot of uh, roadblocks in the way. Mm -hmm. I was a I was a radio guy. I was a stand up comic, and uh, actually, I was getting fired, which is a theme throughout my life, uh, where I was being laid off, and I was going to go to Louisville to do a radio show with Dennis Dillon, who was going to be the program director. And I got a call from a lovely lady by the name of Mary West, who you may remember, Kyle. I don't know if you do or not, but she. Yes, I do. She said, I saw you at the comedy club and we've got a spot that we'd like to put you in for the morning show because we love your personality. So I jumped to TV and that was a very long time ago. And I did mornings for a while and then I was hosting the 1230 show and um, eventually met this girl and then we started our thing which was a disaster as oh, you know awful and um, here we are now punishing not just Lexington but the entire south oh my gosh <laughs> that's awesome that you guys created your own brand um, because having worked with both of you guys obviously that's uh, you know we met at LAX 18 you guys had Awesome chemistry there. Create it your own brand. I mean, not many people can say that. Um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what comes to mind when I think of you two. Uh, specific, specifically because Lee looks like Regis Philbin. Um, but that's who I think of. Yes, yeah. yes. No, we get that a lot. A lot of people say, they're like, oh my gosh, you guys are, you know, Kelly and Ryan. You guys are Regis and Kelly. Regis yeah. and Kathy. We don't care which one, which combo of those people and that show people tell us we remind them of. We yeah. love to hear it. We don't care which one it is. We're angry either way. So you're just <laughs> really irritated. 
Because I'm always Kelly in the No, I, I loved Regis. I, I thought Regis was the quintessential so project. I, you know, oh, yeah. I thought Regis was great at what he did. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's a compliment. Mm -hmm. I think it's me. They're saying I'm, I'm Regis. You're right? Regis. Not you? You're okay. Rage. You're Rage. Yeah. yeah. No, and that's I'm, a safe assumption. It's just, yeah. we just get to have fun every day. Like, that's our job. And to be able to, you know, because we were doing that before at 18, we had such a great time there, but then to be able to take our brand, our partnership that we kind of discovered there and start our own production company, start our own show and really make it entirely what we wanted, um, you know, and yeah, we just get to have fun. And basically the show has kind of turned into people just get to watch us live our lives and put ourselves in uncomfortable, ridiculous situations and see how we handle it. Look at the branding there, Kyle. Look at that. Oh my gosh. It never I know. I know what you're doing. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> what would you credit your guys' success to? Individually, as a team, however you look at that. Because again, not everyone can create something that you all have created. And obviously, you guys did something along the way that made you successful to get you to this point. So, what advice would you give to someone and say, you know what? If you do these things, you might have a chance at you know whatever it is you're pursuing. Well, for us, it was pork belly futures. Uh, the market hit. <laughs> a certain way <laughs> and we filled that void you know i guess for us i don't know how you would create it kyle be honest with you because i think with Haley and i it was lightning in a bottle I, you know it was the way our personalities gel and the way we irritate one another you know it, it's um it's it's hard to duplicate i don't know right. that we, we could do it with someone else really I, you know i Maybe. And we've tried that. We've had guest hosts and, and God bless them. They hung in there with us. But, you know, she she uh, foils my attempts to do whatever it is I'm trying to be successful. And I'm always irritating her. Yeah. But somehow that makes this magic on television that I think everybody likes to be a part of. And, and, and people have that person in their life that is that one person they can always laugh with. And I think they see that reflected back at them, you mm -hmm. know, and I, and I think that's sort of the magic and, and for us you know there's a love there there's a uh, and we're both faith-based people so there's never any harm you know no matter what we're saying to one another we know that down deep there's this mutual respect mm -hmm. and the audience can pick up on that so we can say these things to one another and with no ill will or effect and, and the audience goes yeah, that's the way they play because mm -hmm. we're best friends we really are like that's the relationship that we have we are absolute best friends and you know so i think that's what people can connect to because they see you know you give your friends grief all the time that's part of being friends you know you're ragging on your friends all the time that's just what we're doing we just happen to be on tv and you get to see it we'd be talking to each other the same way even if we were just hanging out you and, know and i think the magic there is a lot of that is due to Haley, kyle because you you've got guy buddies that you love to tease and hang out with and that's just the way you verbalize affection because men can't do it right Haley's that rare unicorn of a girl that can she can do that with the way the guys do um and and thinks that way so that opens up a whole plethora of opportunities for me to be funny and i scotty pippen you know she michael wins you know maybe three championships but six with scotty you know, that's kind of the way I look at it. I'll be Scotty. I look at you so differently now, Haley. Do you? She's Scotty Pippen. I'm Scotty Pippen. I mean, yeah. it's honestly, it's something and I'm by the way, messaging I've been trying to get out there. Just so you know, I'm Horace Grant. I'm not Michael Jordan. <laughs> I was going to say, are you making yourself MJ in this scenario? <laughs> I was just assuming. I was too. I thought you were MJ. Yeah. For, in answer to your question, Kyle, just some... Because I get a lot of young female um, college students reaching out to me saying, hey, I would right. love to have your career. I would love to, you know, and that's such an honor. And I always try to respond to those emails or those messages. Because give it up. Give it up. Stop. No, I always, because I was that girl, you know, uh, just a decade ago. It wasn't that long where I was reaching out to people that I admired and thought, gosh, I would kill to have her job. You know, I would, yeah. how did she get there? And so I always try to respond and be a mentor to girls that I was in their shoes not too long ago. And the advice I give them, because when I look back over my career, not only solo before I met Lee, but especially now is it's going to be uncomfortable, but you can't let fear hold you back because 
the first time you do everything, the first time you do a live shot, the first time you go on that job interview for your very first job, it's terrifying. But holding on to that fear and letting it actually push you and fuel you is what's going to get you to the next level. You know, even if you're afraid, just do it. Just do it and don't think about it. My big motto that I live by is don't you think. You got a motto? I have a motto that I have to tell myself. <laughs> Don't think, just do, no. you know, because if you think about it too much, you're probably not going to do it. And you're going to sit there and think what could have been. So, yeah. So I always tell people. Yeah. You can talk yourself out of it, yeah. and, but I, I love you two are, you two are both so genuine and authentic. I'm also hearing that you're authentic people. I know that because I know you all. So what you see is what you get with you two. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm driven by anger. As you know, Kyle, that's right. the thing that motivates me. When mm -hmm. I get up in the morning, I'm mad as hell. <laughs> well, Lee, you know, you and I have at least one thing in common. You said, you know, you've been fired from, oper you know, from jobs and it eventually yeah. led to this or that. You know, we had, I, I lost my first job in TV and, and I realized just how cutthroat the real world is, right? So I think it made me better ultimately. And I think you can attest to that because had you not have lost your most recent opportunity, would you have the Lee and Haley show on your own? No. And again, we would have. Listen, Kyle, you, you know this as well as I do. There was a, a divine province that took over Haley and I, our lives, because everything that unfolded, well, that brought us together, and then we were on a trajectory to be syndicated with a, the former company. They wanted us to be syndicated. Then we would have, but then things unfolded, which I, for the life of me, still don't quite grasp and understand what happened. But I, I really believe that was the good, good Lord's way of getting us out of there so Haley and I could own our own destiny, control everything that we do from this point forward. You talk about branding, it really is just us. That's, that's what we're doing, and all these opportunities have opened up to us because of what seemed like a storm cloud was nothing but a blessing from the good Lord himself. That's awesome how you guys look at it that way. And it's easy to look back at it, you know, now. And maybe when you're going through it, it might have been a oh, certainly awesome. a different um, perspective. But it, it is awesome to look back and just see how, you know, God has his fingerprints on all this stuff. And you can connect the dots. Unfortunately, we can't do that looking forward. But looking forward for you two, um, like I said, you guys have created this right there in Central Kentucky. Talk about what the show, you know, how it's starting to expand around the country. Well, we've added... Uh We've added five markets, so we're going to be in six total uh, by September. And so we stage these out so we can sort of learn from our mistakes. So once a month, we're adding a new market. Um, and we start with Bowling Green on Monday, May 10th. So we're as we are taping this show, this is our first syndicated show. So we're very excited about that, uh, that we're going to tape later this afternoon. Uh, and then it's uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. Then it's Gulfport, Biloxi, Mississippi. Then it's Macon, Georgia. And then it's uh, finally Columbus, Starkville, Tupelo. And we can learn from all of that as we bring these markets in. And the thing that we have to learn to do, just a few tweaks, because we're not changing who we are or what we're doing. We're just going to be a little bit more generic about mm -hmm. how we approach things. Because the dynamic of the show is the relationship between me and Haley. It's not necessarily the, the local bakery in Lexington, right. it, it's us and our adventures. And we're gonna travel a lot more so we can feature some of these cities that we've been in, but also showcase the state of Kentucky too. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And I want to give you guys that opportunity to share it with people just so they see the Lee and Haley show. And I love it, you guys are right here, you're talking about it early on. So when you guys are the next Regis and Kelly or Ryan and Kelly or whoever else is on there with Kelly. Bonnie days, and Clyde. Um, oh, okay. Don't forget about me, don't forget about me. That's right, um, <clears throat> okay. You guys talked about, um, or Lee, you just mentioned, you know, some uh, some some failures, learn, learning from your mistakes along the way. Well, she's um, a what other advice would you give, um, you know, aspiring, specifically aspiring TV journalists? Because both of you guys have, you know, been part of the morning routine. So it wasn't like you guys just automatically had a show. So you guys, you know, came up through the uh, system a little bit, if you will. Uh, what are some things that you could share with those who are trying to get that first opportunity and things that you think they need to learn about getting into TV and breaking through? 
Gosh, um, breaking through, I mean, for my first job, I can't even tell you how many video resumes I sent out, like tons. And I got very few calls back, <laughs> but I was like, if I could just get that one phone call that if my thing right. was, if I could just get an interview, if I could just get in the room and show them, I really want to do this. I will learn. I will work hard. I will work any shift. And that was her pitch to get this show. Right. And I, I took, I called her back, Kyle. I said, all oh, right, I guess. Yeah. I see that. He called me Harley though, and I was like, I don't feel like you're you really know who I am. Harley Harmon. Harley Harmon. Um, no, so I, I just think you, you kind of have to just put yourself out there, send out as many resumes as you can, take that first job, and know even that first job is not going to be great. It's going to be really hard. You're going to have to learn a lot. You've got to get over the hump, and just know better days are coming. Better schedules are coming. Um, and TV, especially early on in local news, there is no glamour, okay? There is no glamour. It's a lot of hard work. You're having to do everything on your own. Um, you know, you see TV anchors on, you know, on TV and you think, oh, they have such a cush job. They all were down in the trenches in the beginning. And for me, Kyle, I think, you know, what I've learned, I guess, if I was going to talk to some aspiring young comic or television broadcaster, because I'm not a journalist, as you well know, Kyle. Oh, oh, no, I could care less what those people are doing. Here's my thoughts. <laughs> but anyway, I, um, I, I, there is nobody going to come and get you and make you anything. Nobody's coming to you because you think you've got talent and say, hey, I'm Mr. Hollywood. Here's the keys. You have to go get it. You have to make your own pathway in destiny. And... You know, I, I've been lucky that there are people who have assisted me on the way, but it's all due to the effort you put forth. Yeah. And you got to make these opportunities happen. You just got to keep grinding. And if you love it, I, I think that's the thing. Haley talked about a professor she had where he essentially discouraged everybody to get out of the business. Yeah. And I think that's actually important because if you're discouraged, you don't belong in this business. If you think mm -hmm. you can make it, then nobody should be able to tell you any different. And, you know, I was hard-headed enough to keep doing it, you know, and good God, I'm 85 years old. Yes. And I just <laughs> made it, Kyle. Oh. If you want to call this making it, I mean, look at this glamorous, look at these blinds behind me. I've made it to the top. Hi. You can't get yeah. blinds at Walmart. Mm -mm. You get them a lot. <laughs> well, no, you guys have certainly... Uh... You know set a high bar for sure i mean like i said it, it's so cool that you all have your own thing and i can say that because you know i have my own thing i don't have my own brand like a tv show but it's so cool that you know you guys went after it so you know that piece of advice in itself that should resonate with anyone who's going after anything whether it's an aspiring journalist or you know aspiring fill in the blank so i love that lee um so <clears throat> what other advice maybe were you all given um about you know pursuing what it ultimately was that you wanted to do so you know Haley for you being on TV uh, Lee for you uh, you know being a butcher whatever it is that you were pursuing at an earlier age right. um, you know That's what question. advice were you given um, I let's see advice I was given um, I don't know if it was necessarily advice I was given but it was just something I learned along the way and it was basically just act confident and no one will question you just go in there and present yourself as confident, even if you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm freaking out, I'm freaking out. I'll, that's how I had to coach myself through, I'll never forget my very first live shot on local news on WBKO. I was so terrified, but I just did it and I went in there and I was like, I got this, I can do it. And I nailed it <laughs> and I was so proud of myself. But I, inside I was like, oh my gosh, like wanted to pass away. Um, I agree. That's how I approached uh, everything. Just yeah. confident, act, act like confident. you've been there. I walked in the operating room, robed up. I said, scalpel. Okay. And <laughs> they bought it. They bought it. Mm -hmm. They did. Now that patient uh, survived, but we all learned a lesson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. And then another piece of advice that I got specifically for TV journalism was from a professor in college. Uh, his name was Chris Clark, and he was a main anchor on WTVF in Nashville forever, and then he taught at my, I went to MTSU, and for TV journalism, he was like, he said, uh, w when you're writing a story, tell them, tell them again, tell them what you just told them. Like, just say the same information over and over again in your story, and it gets the point across. If you're really trying to get a message across to your viewers, that's the best way to do it. Tell them, tell them again, tell them what you just told them. 
Um, no, I like that. You guys both say, you know, act like you've been there before, right? Have that confidence. Um, you know, you know, I, I tell people like I still get imposter syndrome. What I do, like, am I able to do what I'm able to do, even though I know I'm able to do it? And obviously, you know, you two are both <clears throat> again confidence exudes when I, you know, I'm around you guys. So um, you're good actors if you're not confident, but certainly I know you both are very confident because you're competent. You're good at what you do. So. How did you develop that you. confidence, you think, or any other skill set that comes to mind, you think, for you know yourself and that you'd like to say, hey, do these things in order to be better at whatever it is that you're pursuing? I, well, for me, the it's easy. Failure. That's how you develop confidence. You know, especially, I always translate things. My best learning experiences are on the stage when doing stand-up comedy. And you make, you go up there and sometimes you bomb, you you die, the jokes don't work, and you realize that didn't kill me. It didn't kill me. And broadcasting is the same way. And then yeah. after a while, you develop an exoskeleton to where you go, well, wait a minute, I've been here before, I can do this. And I think it's, it's just trial and error, uh, but I, it has to, you have to have failures. And don't look at those as some career ending moment. Look at it as an opportunity to build upon. That's, mm -hmm. that's the way I look at it. For me, it was just repetition. You know, I've been in the TV business. Oh, it was failure. Trust me. Uh, I was there for all of them. Were you? No, for me, it's just repetition. And in that repetition, you are going to mess up a lot, especially early on. But that's the beauty of working in a small market. Your first job is you're allowed to fail. You're allowed to not be perfect. But you eventually, you figure out what the business is all about. You figure out your personal way that you do things. Um, and then, you know, I've been in the TV business since 2010. And now, like, when I'm having to do something that's stressful or having to talk on the fly or having to do it's like i know i can do this because i've done it literally thousands of times now you know so i still get nervous about certain things on tv but it's like no, i know i can do it and i have to tell myself that because i've done it thousands of times so it's just that repetition just like anything it becomes second nature um this is what she does to me kyle she hits me with that i've been in the tv business since 2010 Good Lord, I was on my third reverse mortgage in 2010. Do you know how? I'm not saying that a long, long, long time, but I've been in it a minute. Look at him. He's sick of you. He's, he's finished. Kyle you. passed out. He laughs the hardest. Oh my God. Wait, we've killed him. There you are. Okay, we. Yeah, yeah we see you now. I, I heard you say passed out or something. So. Yeah, that's. Oh, yeah, you, know, you just went away when you were laughing. Yeah, that's right. I, yeah. Okay. Well, last thing I've got for you guys. Last thing I've got for you. Um, what do you guys want to share last? I know we can talk about so many different things from TV journalism to having your own show to lessons learned, successes, failures, all the above. What would you all like to share for someone? And just think about, you know, who might see this, you know, aspiring TV people trying to get their first job, trying to get their fifth job, whatever it may be. Um, so I'm going to leave the last bit to you, you know, piece of advice or, um, just whatever comes to mind. Well, I have a wonderful multi-level marketing opportunity. And with if you just get three people, and those three people get three people, I think we can all be successful. And I'd like to introduce you to my new gadget. What is it? Please, and leave no detail out. Have you thought about a stapler? Okay. You know how right. many of these things we can... Kyle, what do you expect when you ask a serious question of Lee Cruz? He's going to give you just crap. A serious you know question with no direction. No direction whatsoever. Yeah. He's going to take it and run with it. Here, want, here's Haley. Start the violin music. Here we go. Listen to I, this. I just want to say nonsense. I just want to say, and please, you you say this, but you just don't want people to know. Lee is actually very tender-hearted, and so I know he's going to agree with everything I say. I just want people to know that we don't take for granted where we are today. We are two of the luckiest people on this planet. We don't think that we're better than anyone. We don't think that we deserve more than anyone. We feel... We know it. We know, we know it. <laughs> no. We feel incredibly lucky that we met and that we have this chemistry and that even though hard times happened, that God opened doors for us to start a TV production company. Like when I was a little girl or starting in this business, I never would have dreamed I'd be here. When Lee was a little girl in this business, he would have never dreamed. I just wanted to be a princess. And for those doors to open and for it to work and for us to have a show and to have our landing place here in Central Kentucky and then for it to grow in other markets and have people in other places get to know us, it's honestly like it feels like an out-of-body experience. So I just want people to know that, that we are, we are super blessed and God can open those kind of doors. If he can do it for us, 
anything he does for other people, oh. he can do for you. Guys, we don't deserve it. No, we don't. We don't deserve it. And hey, yeah, we have. You, we are working gratefulness hard. and humility. I love that. Kyle, you talk about a couple of sinners. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm right there in line with you. No, you guys were awesome. Um, like I said, that's part of why I want to have you on here. Uh, that you know, just to share about you know, even when you get to those stages, um, to be humble and be grateful along the way. Otherwise, because um, TV, there can be so many egos in it, and that's why I want to have you guys on here. So thank you for making time and everything you shared today. Yeah, no, thank you for having us. This was a blast. Yeah, it's good to see you again, buddy. Proud of you. Yeah. And thank you for checking out this channel. If you found this content beneficial, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and share it with someone you think might find it beneficial as well because this channel was simply started and created to serve you, to help others grow, to learn how other successful TV journalists do or did it. So take what serves you so you can get better faster and reach your next level.